This is TWIT, This Week in Tech, episode 27 for October 23rd, 2005. I keep waiting for the applause. There's no <laughs> applause. <laughs> we're in front. No, yeah, yeah. This shows you how much money we're spending on crew. <laughs> Too <laughs> much, apparently. To Let me introduce the TWITs going around the table. Alex Lindsay from Pixel Core. Without him, we wouldn't have this fabulous big head video that we're doing here. Speaking of big heads, it's Patrick Norton of Digital Life <laughs> what TV. What do I have a big head? Because you couldn't be on screen with me. With if it would look like uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum without it. <laughs> Patrick's going uh, going great guns on DLTV. You're like number six on iTunes. I That's hope so. Awesome. Yeah. Actually, we're we're doing a name shift and going to two episodes a week in November. So I don't know. There's going to be some angry people in the Twit world about that. I can't. can't you're not using three cameras, are you? Yes, I am. Oh, Actually, we're man. using four. But you don't have XL2s. We're moving to seven. <laughs> we can't afford XL2s. John, John, we can't either. John, but we got them. John C. Dvorak, of course, uh, from Dvorak.org slash blog. And a nice shirt today. And uh, look look who John drug in with him. Uh, <laughs> Lawrence Lessig is here, professor of law at Stanford Law School, founder for the Center for Internet and Society. It's great to have it's you. Great to founder be here. Founder and uh, president or chairman or what do you call yourself, the Creative Commons? Just twit. The, the king, the king twit right. at Creative <laughs> Commons. Without him... Uh, we wouldn't have a license. So we, we thank you uh, for that, Lawrence. It's great to have you uh, here. Um, and uh, and we missed an episode last week, so I thought we'd, we'd just briefly mention this. It's old news now, but the uh, video iPod is out, now, and I've got one here. Should I open this up? You've had it for a while. You've been banging it. for about three days. What do you think? Well, you know, there's a lot of scratches on the stainless steel on the back. I was well, thinking about, oh my happened. goodness, there's scratches on our iPod. Yeah, how do you feel about <laughs> class action lawsuits, Larry? <laughs> there uh, is a class action lawsuit for scratches on the nano. You know, what's I, funny? I a riddle in this. You know, it's what is? I mean, what is funny about hey, this? Hey, it's plastic. It scratches. <laughs> yeah. It's metal. It scratches. Yeah. Things scratch. What are they? Is it supposed to be scratch proof? Are they selling it as thus? No. I don't think so. No. Yeah, well, the black ones are supposed to be worse than the. Uh, the fit and finish doesn't look to be as good on this as in Let's previous see. iPods. Oh, you okay, scratched the crap. It's scratched. Oh my God! I hate it. Yeah, when they that got happens. it spelled wrong. Yeah, let's see. This is—I uh, is, have to say—it's a beautiful device, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I couldn't believe how much thinner it was. It's nice. It's—it's it's, it's it's a pretty wide. device. It's very big. And, and, it's very and one of the things that we're doing, and we've already started uh, with uh, the last episode, but we're going to do it uh, full bore with this episode, is uh, producing the video of Twit for. Uh, this device. I mean, that's not the only device it'll play on, right? Right. No, no, it'll play on a lot of things, but it, I'm pretty excited about this one. You know, I think that uh, I yeah. have a PSP that I've been so watching. So this is a regular iPod, right? Yeah. yeah. Compare the two, you'll see that it's... Yeah, actually, it's a little thinner. That's the 30. Now, the 60's fatter, right? Yeah, that is a 60. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a 60, yeah. yeah. Essentially, uh, it looks the same with the And what are we going to encode in MPEG-4? We can look... It's going to be encoded in MPEG-4. Not, not <laughs> H.264. <laughs> Evidently, there is, regular there is some video. Uh, rumors of the, that the H.264 is still a little quirky. Um, on it, so we're going to stick with the MP4. Yeah, can I have this? Yeah, sure. There Great. You go. Everybody who joins us from now on <laughs> gets a free video. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we just spent forty thousand dollars on cameras. Ouch. You know what? I got a bad, a little uh, uh, kind of a surprise. Makes noise. Um, yeah, that's. But you know, that's not real, is it? It's a little. We can turn off the clicker if you want. I like the clicker. Yeah. <laughs> There's something. There is something about all of that. You know, the cameras that make the little. They have the digital fake. Yeah. You know, there's like, something. You know, there's something about the, one of the reasons of the success for this product, and I think the same reason that the internet was successful and the Macintosh has done so well and introduced the mouse is they. There is this. Any of this motion. There's a. There's an addictive mechanism involved here. Twiddling and your thumb. Exactly. And in fact, the same thing with the mouse. And yeah, you can talk to psychiatrists about or psychologists about this. And there's a addictive it's mechanism compulsive. here. And you're going to see this, by the way. This is you heard this here first on a phone coming out of Sweden called the Neo Node. That's which is have a click wheel. It's totally thumb. There's no yeah. dials or anything on it. The whole thing is a thumb motion, and, and it's one of the most popular phones right now. And in, in parts of like Russia and any place, we're going to. You know, it's a kind of a high end phone that costs four hundred fifty dollars, but it has that same addictive quality, and it's going to be huge in this country. Yeah, this out. is not a bad form factor for a phone, actually, the, the mm. new iPod for video. I mean, that would be an okay phone, wouldn't it? That would be, be like Steve Martin and moving trio. Uh, yeah, the trio. You know, uh, Bowfinger, you know, just with the phony phone. <laughs> 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 Fake it. Hello? Oh, I mean, this <laughs> is the I mean, it's same, same form factor. Yeah, I guess so. It's, it's thinner. It's lighter. Yeah. It doesn't have a keyboard, but it is similar to the 650. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this week's uh, big story, or actually last week's big story, was the iPod video, and I think that boy, it didn't take very long. Uh, you could get it in stores on Thursday. There was porn available Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I think that what's interesting is how 
how little the you know the the Hollywood has jumped in. You know, I mean, they right. you know, Lost that, by the way looks awesome. I couldn't believe how well really? it looked just going full screen on my laptop. You but know, I mean, you know, downloading it, it zooms up really, really. Did well. they pay you to watch it? They didn't pay me. You I paid bought a buck all ninety nine. I'd be, I'd have to be paid to watch Lost. <laughs> right, let me see if I have a buck ninety nine. I have to admit, I've been a little out of the loop, so I hadn't seen. I haven't seen it or Desperate Housewives, yeah. or I haven't no. watched any of that. Oh stuff. please. There is scan. You have watched these? I, I've, I've watched television, but you know you okay. can only put up with so much of it. What? Well, uh, yeah, I'm just show? having one of those what's moments where I'm like, like this is we're now distancing us from the vast majority of normal. Yeah, Americans, yeah, they're all like okay, right? typical we're Americans. Hey, typical know. Americans aren't watching this. I can guarantee you right now. I, I know that. <laughs> I'm just having a moment here. <laughs> what's uh, what's your show, John? Is it Days of Our Lives? It, it, oh, I love that show. General Hospital's the <laughs> General other General Hospital. No, I, I like Alias. Uh, I like That's a good show. I like Law and Order. I do watch the. Do you like the, Alias or Jennifer Garner? I like Alias. I like okay. the story. I'm just checking. <laughs> she's good too. I mean, she's you know, she, I think she makes the show work. Would you watch it on a? a no, on never. I, I watch I it on. The, I only watch Alias on the projector, so I'm watching right. it on a hundred inch screen anyway. <laughs> so, um, and there's a bunch of other shows I watch. I watch about six or seven shows. On, on Why do you think? I like the Boston Legal Show. I think it's hilarious. It's one of the funniest shows on television. Larry, do you show. ever watch legal shows on TV? Uh, really try hard not to. I he was on it. West Wing. Yeah. He, he was a character. My character on West was on West Wing, right? Isn't that cool? Yeah. Christopher Lloyd. Played by Christopher Lloyd, right? <laughs> <laughs> did he do the kind of? Did you get a, a royalty for this, or did you I, I gave my name away for free. And they called you. Was it? Was he called Larry Lessig on the show? He was called Professor Lawrence Lessig from Stanford Law School. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> and was it the Georgian Constitution? Is that what they were talking about? Or? So right, I was involved in writing the Georgian Constitution, and they took a spin off of that and did the. Uh, it was the Belarus con Constitution. That's right. They were writing. That's right. Yeah. 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 The greatest. The greatest part of it, though, was I. My character walks in and introduce, is introduced to the president, and the president says, Lawrence Lessig, the future of ideas, Lawrence Lessig? <laughs> 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 Only Martin Sheen could do that. Yeah. Is yeah. the president and get still away with Sheen? it. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to Is that show still on? I thought Gina yeah. Davis was the president. There's two shows. She's the I'm very confused. Well, that's, you know, a lot of people believe that the Gina Davis show is, is a setup to get so people would get used to the idea so sure. Hillary can walk Don't run. you think that Carsey Werner and all the, all the Clinton liberals in Hollywood said, we've got to do a show. We've got to do something. Else. Quick. I'm gonna make this work. <laughs> Interesting fact out of uh, out of DC: the FBI crime report just came out, and juvenile violent crimes down not only from last year and the year before, but overall, the last ten years down thirty percent. Video How games. Can that be? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, video but, uh, games. but so th that gives the light all the people who say that video games are teaching kids to be violent. There's the, the juvenile crime is down thirty percent. Sublimation. But they're much more violent to their computers than they were before. <laughs> crash, crash. They're going through mice one after another. <laughs> I mean, I think there is a... I, I have to say, if kids play Grand Theft Auto a lot, they get desensitized to, to violence. Do they you really? I yeah, think they do. Because Henry's been running around with a Glock. Up in no. Petaluma, right? <laughs> no, but I'll give you an example. I was just up in Toronto, and some guys ran over... You know, Those are Canadians. That's different, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A. <laughs> I was in Toronto. Some guys ran over a guy because he didn't give him directions. And they, they got in their car and they drove over the guy. And I think that if you play a lot of Grand Theft Auto, you think, oh That's yeah, you natural. hit people, yeah. it's normal, yeah. right? Uh, and I think they don't really. The, I'm not. This is not. This is thin, Leo. <laughs> I'm not buying it. Well, no, it's just logic. But of course, fa the facts are that it does. It has re something's reduced juvenile violence. But the, you know, the people were shooting each other in L.A. in traffic, you know, a decade ago. I mean, this is this is not new behavior. This but is not. Is with not so Actually, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot less. There's a lot less freeway shootings than there used to be. There's also less juveniles. I mean, you know, the 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 that big that big glut of the the babies of the baby boomers is right. now moving into an older <laughs> an older you know crowd that you know, and there's not as so if they're well, looking no, at the wrong, I, I is, think is that's it again or see if it's per capita. Well, I think, yeah, it's, I think, I think it's, it's this has got to be normalized. Yeah. yeah. Well, otherwise it's meaningless. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I think that's a very interesting. You know, I always say my my kids play Grand Theft Auto. You know, and I'd let them play, you know, the whole thing. And I, my comment is, you know, I, I think you have to be a violent person to go out and be violent in the real world. But, you know, they say, well, this is like a simulation. And, I'm, and the only thing I have to say, if like all hell breaks loose and my children have to become auto thieves, they will be very good at it. I, so that I will, this will have protected them from getting uh, in trouble. Do you play any video games, Larry? Or? I, I don't. Sorry. He's too busy probably to play video games. Yeah. He's traveling all the time. He's never around. I'm surprised he's here. He's not here. Where are you going to be next week? Slovenia. Really? Uh, have you been to Slovenia before? No. Oh, it's, you'll love it. It's so here. It's supposed to be amazing. Oh, man, it's yeah. terrific. Yeah. Welcome back to Travel Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Slovenia is terrific. Believe me, Ljubljana is unbelievable. But, 
Larry, you have kind of a passion for, I know, the Eastern Europe. Spent a lot of time there, but I never was in Slovenia. I'm surprised you've never, never gotten there. Are they working on a constitution? or? No, but they're launching Creative Commons licenses next week. Let's talk, I want to talk about Creative Commons. You're doing, I have to say, I point people mm. to uh, the Creative Commons site because you're doing what sh uh, I'm thrilled to see, kind of a history of Creative Commons right. and, and, and really talking about how it happened and what, it, what is Creative Commons. So it's really simple, basic idea. Give artists and authors a simple way to say the freedoms that they want to run with their content so that there's no ambiguity, there's no need to call a lawyer, you know what you can do, and you make it easy for other people to do stuff with it. What's um, wrong with the current copyright law? Why don't they just use that? Well, the problem is that the current copyright law, by default, says all rights are reserved. And whenever you use any creative copyrighted material, automatically the law says you've got a clear permission first. Now, of course, most people don't worry about that, uh, and most people do whatever the hell they want. Illegally. They, illegally, <laughs> could be. Uh, yeah. But the problem is that we're moving into a world five years from now where technology will lock down the content, so you can only do precisely what you've gotten permission to do. Right. So the thing that we're really afraid of is that you know, when that world happens, we will have destroyed the potential of this technology to be used for all sorts of other fantastic creative stuff. So what we want to do is to build a kind of uh, uh, buttress of support for the expression of freedom running with content, and that's what the licenses do. They just basically say, use it in this way, and if you use it in that way, consistent with the license, then you're guaranteed to continue to make the stuff available. John, you wrote in an article in July that Creative Commons was humbug. <laughs> Did I use that word? Yeah, that's right it's here. It's a title. Oh, oh, oh well, you know, the, the copyers make those oh, titles. Yeah, okay. But uh, <laughs> What's uh, your complaint? There's something, well, I thought that, you know, I'm well protected now, what do I need all this other stuff for? But Larry pointed something out to me recently, which I have to say is kind of distressing, which is that, uh, and you might want to explain this, which is why I can't go on my website and, and declare something to be in the public domain, which I always wanted to, oh, was that, well, this there you go, now, you tell us money. why this isn't, and this is like, really changes my attitude about things, because if you can't, if I can't say, hey, look, you guys I can, I give you all you, rights, I give you all rights, go steal it, take it, it's yours, free, you know, because I, I write, do, you know, Photoshop things, or yeah. I write stuff that I don't care, well, but, I've written software and done that, I've done that for years, right, well, yeah. what's the problem, well, the, the point is, before 1976, there was essentially a thousand ways you could do that. But after 1976, the law changed and said copyright was automatic. And, and give us the, the history about the 1976 legislation. Does it have rights. anything to do with Disney? Um, doesn't everything have something to do with Disney? <laughs> <laughs> the 76, not so much about Disney. But, but the fact is, before 76, copyright was what you could think of as an opt-in system. You had to raise your hand and say, I want protection. And a very small proportion of creative work had that kind of protection. The protection was all rights reserved. It made total sense. After 76, they changed the law. So by default, everything's automatically protected, right? You so you scribble. don't have to really do anything. You don't have to do anything. You don't, you don't have, have to, to put a C, C no. 1970. You don't have to write no. copyright. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to put a date or anything. And then it's automatically protected now for a term of life of the author plus 70 or for corporate works 95 years. That has everything to do That's with That's a long time. Yeah. So if <laughs> I live to 80, it's 150 years of copyright. That's exactly right. Yeah. Automatically. Automatically. Hey, it's a anything. bonanza for the copyright owners. But wait a minute. Right. I There's own money copyright. to be made. Why can't I say I assert no rights? Well, the problem is that, you know, when you give a gift, like, that would be a gift. I, you know, Dvorak's work wouldn't be a gift, but yours would be a gift. <laughs> hey. <turn> over to <laughs> and when you give a gift like that, you've got to tangibly deliver it. That's what the law says. Well, how do you tangibly uh, deliver a copyright, right? It's just an intangible thing. I right? couldn't so, write a letter and say, here's the letter. So we have a routine at Creative Commons where you can put stuff in the public domain, yeah. basically, you know, Take a rubber chicken, shake it over your head, spin around six times, scream public domain. I did and that's that, enough and to it's signal, fun. maybe. <laughs> We're not sure whether that actually works. But the point is, there's no easy way to do it. But the other thing is, can you weird talk about... If you ask me. So is there, has, nobody's said that the Creative Commons is legal and effective, then. Well, Creative Commons licenses don't put things in the public domain. Right? Ah, so, so that's how they're different. So what you're basically doing is you're saying, you have to do a couple things. The minimum is give me attribution. Um, and the maximum is, for example, can't use it for commercial work, have to release it in a share-alike kind of copy. That's our copy or, or license on this, is, right. is non-commercial, share-alike. What if you want to say, what if you want to release it without, like, say, I'll, I say, you know, I don't care. 
You can not. You can say. You can say you wrote it. You can do. You can sell it commercially. Yeah. I don't care. Is yeah. that part of the creative? That's comments? public domain, and we have a routine to try to put something into the public domain, and it takes a couple formal steps, and you have to go through a, a document. So it's a, process. it's a. It's painful. It's a painful process because right. they made it. it makes so no in sense. Right. Well, I mean, that would the idea was to protect. You know. You know the. Copyright, you know, I would, I almost said, made the mistake of saying that's to protect authors and create and creative right. types. But in fact, we all know this was to done done to 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 protect the copyright owners. And many times, and most writers know this, is that most uh, publications now try to steal all your rights. They, when you, it, they yeah. won't even buy buy. Right. Yeah, we won't give you anything. It's almost rights. impossible for writers to get. You know all their rights, and you know just That's sell exactly the first right. North American. They are, they sell. Well, you know we buy everything. Magazines, uh, actually books. You can. It's pretty Fiction, easy to keep. You can your, hold on to now, the rights. with most books, you can. Yeah. But with with magazines, magazines newspapers, like a, I've I've been offered my rights twice in ten years of magazines. Well, I always insist on mine, and and most people read my stuff like you say, and they say, "What's it worth?" You know, so they give it to me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but generally, and I, but I also have a long history of like demanding at, at least shared copyright. So it's like copyright by mm -hmm. both. So at least I can give permissions, and nobody cares about it. And it's, you know, because a lot of people will say, "Hey, can I reprint this or that?" And I'll say, "Yeah, but you have to put." Reprinted by permission of author and in copyright, you know, whatever. Even though apparently you don't have to even do that. But uh, so I, generally speaking, the copyright these these big corporations that just bought up all these copyrights and they're just, yeah. just a scam. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I was young and ignorant, I thought, oh, that's cool. I just have to publish something and it's automatically copyrighted, I'm protected. And I mean, that's not a bad thing. And you uh, were. It's, and I was. It's. I guess what's bad is I. The, I thought I was giving other stuff away, and I wasn't. You weren't, and and I don't think it was bad. I don't think the system in 1976 was bad before the internet. The problem is, you come to the world of the internet, and right. everybody has these assumptions about how they intend people to be able to use their work. The and now says, they can insist on it. Now they now can they enforce can it. On it. Right. But but the law says that those assumptions don't mean anything until right. they're expressed in some formal way. Right. So what we're trying to do is to make it easy for people to you know express the kind of freedoms they think ought to run with their content. Now, now I know if we ever uh, take this video or the audio, I, we won't ever do it with the audio. We're never going to. It's always going to be that licensed that way, and we'll always have it unprotected. But a video might well, for instance, if we were able to sell it on the Apple Store, they might say you got to use our DRM, or Audible might say you got to use our DRM. Why would Apple care whether we use their DRM to protect our content? I don't know. Uh, Audible would. I already, uh, you know, I, I know for a fact. But why? That I don't get it. I, don't, I guess that's just how it's their system works. Probably tied into their mechanism. Yeah. Ah. That's okay, their payment. That's probably right. It's probably and, and I'll tell you why Apple would, because they get a percentage, a large percentage. So they uh, they now suddenly are rights holders. They want they have an interest in it. So that kind of screws well, uh, screws everything up. And I think it? that one of the things that that I that I like about some some of the newer stuff with Creative Commons is is also the time thing because I, you know what shortening the time frame to fourteen years or you can extend it to because even, even that's longer than with a lot of the stuff that I create. You know, I'm really interested in having a lot of rights for the first. Five years, you know, maybe ten years. Mm -hmm. Fourteen years is, by you know, most of the stuff that we're doing now is. But how about one hundred fifty years? <laughs> but I don't need it. You know, and the thing is, is I'd be happy to like, you know, I'd love to have a cascade where I go, you know, I'm, I want all the rights for the first two years. I want some of these rights for the next five years, and I want no rights after that. Yeah. You know, and those are the kind of things that that I, you know, because you want to be able to extend it. And I think that most of us, I know, for you know, I have a company that makes products, you know, and. Ninety percent of our revenue comes in the first. Yeah, but there could you know, always always right. be that cash cow that just you know is one of, like the Mickey Mouse character that you know you're gonna. You, you want know, to it's an annuity. You you're gonna be making yeah. money. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I guess I'm not sure if it's even if that's even reasonable. Well, what else is <laughs> I mean, you know, for you, maybe. No, no, but I mean, I mean, I, it, but it, Disney used. You no, know, it's not reasonable. It's a it's a complete ridiculous I, situation. It's I, I get that it makes a lot you, of money. You know, but a lot of things. The thing that's been ignored here is the cultural implications and the reason. Right. And the reason that copyright is you know was set up in a certain way to, to allow stuff to drop into the public domain after just a very few years, twenty six and whatever, and with a renewal maybe, is that it had cultural implications. Mm -hmm. Public domain is important. And one of the things that that people aren't noticing is that because you know uh, works of art oil paintings for example we are still stuck essentially in the impressionist era because all Nothing like for, since has been in the public you domain. can't get Picasso in the public domain yeah, it has to be licensed yeah. so so essentially the entire mechanism for improving you know our condition based on art is frozen in time about 1910 yeah and this is this is again much worse because of the implication with digital technology so take um, music right the remix of music the kind of extension of hip-hop Mashups, right. Um, courts have held that there is no fair use right at all to sample music. 
Right? You can sample compositions the way jazz musicians do, but you can't take one second out of a recording without clearing the rights up front. Right? So we've got billion machines out there for making music, but the only way to do it legally through this mashup or remixing type technology is to hire a lawyer who's going to clear all the rights. Or for this. use legal samples. I mean, there there've been cases where artists have released samples on CDs that you could buy, and as long as you attributed them, I mean, the the guys from right. Funk did so this. So there's a beginning of that in a commercial context, and Creative right. Commons is pushing it in this more general non-commercial. There's context. a lot but of the point Creative is, Commons music now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But the point is. The idea that just as the technology it makes it so anybody can be part, can be a cr composer in a certain sense, the law comes in and pulls this away, is crazy. And especially because of this, I think John's point's exactly right, the way it implicates culture. I mean, the only people who can legally produce are people who can afford lawyers that stand next to them. And that's exactly what you don't want in an era where digital technology lets exactly. everybody be a creator. That's exactly right. Why should we tie that? Okay, let's, let's take a step back. I mean, the idea of creation is noble, but how much of this is about creation is how much of this is about an entire generation of people who basically between you know BitTorrent and going back to uh, going back Napster. to Napster have decided that they really don't ever have to pay for any content again. I mean, yeah. is that a legitimate choice? I mean, I realize that we're watching the dinosauring of an entire publishing yeah. system. No, I, it's know, a I great mean, point. I, the, the I don't, I don't support the idea of people taking other people's content without permission. I don't, you know, if I thought. If I thought this battle was about whether you could listen to Britney Spears for free, I'd be on the other side because I don't think you should listen to Britney Spears at any point. Right? So, <laughs> so it's not about getting yeah, content but, for know, free. They also tried to rip the Impressionist paintings off the walls because they were so disturbing. Well, I mean, maybe, not that right. I think in 50 years we're going to look back and think that this was a life-changing point Britney, in music. Right. And, and but but there's that happening with kids and technology. But in addition to that, right. there's extraordinary te there's extraordinary creativity. Do you know about the AMV culture? This is fascinating. There's this thing called. Anime music video oh, culture. Yeah. 100,000 kids, mainly Americans, who record all of the anime series that they can, and then they re-edit it, mm -hmm. setting it to music or setting it to video trailers. Mm -hmm. And so they have these extraordinary productions, all you know, made on their old IMAX up in their bedrooms, that are extraordinarily creative, but it's all taking found work. They can do it. All, and it's legal. It's no. not legal at all. Right? Look so. at the, the great Halo, uh, what is it called? Red, uh, red, what is it? Red versus blue. Yeah, love that. They take Halo uh, f footage from the game and they mm -hmm. put dialogue behind it. That's a, cr a wonderful creative thing, and I think mashups too are, it's like are great. What's up, Tiger Lily? What's up? Exactly, which what was pre nineteen seventy six. So I guess you could. So the the real issue is, I think, Patrick, you're, is that you're in a way undermining an artist's right to make money. You're undermining copyright because if you prevent any kind of fair use, mm -hmm. you're just creating a whole generation of people who says, well, screw it. Yeah. Well, that, I think that that's the thing. I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times when you make more laws, you make more criminals, that's you know, out of nothing. And, 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 the, and, and the issue is, is that, um, you know, there's a lot of st states, there's statistics that'll say, you know, someone who smokes marijuana will then move on to harder drugs. And a lot of people will argue that the reason they'll move on to harder drugs is because they've been they're pushed into an illicit, yeah. an, into an illicit area, not yeah. because marijuana itself is the leader to that. And in the same way, you know, we're going, everything is illegal no matter how you touch it. So that we, from the time I was 10 years old, we were recording our friends' albums and making mixes. We'd all get together and, you know, mm -hmm. you know make mixtapes and stuff like that. All of that was illegal. You but know, and so the well, thing... Well, no, actually, that was clear by well, the Well, that was clear, but now it's not. I mean, but now they're talking about if I want to move can't an iPod... can't do it in a digital context. It, you can, yeah, only, yeah, only in analog, context. not exactly. in digital. Yeah. And so the thing is, is that what we're doing is creating a lot of people. If we made exactly. it easy, if we, if we bring the, you know, even like the, you know, 99 cents, now I, there's a mechanism issue with making it any less than that, and mostly related to Visa <laughs> and, and, and to the, um, so it can't get much lower than that. But, micro but issue. if you made it yeah. 25 cents or 40 cents per song, it would just be too much trouble to go get it somewhere right. else. Right, I people agree with that. I've always money. believed this you know, too. And, 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 and but I the rest of what you're saying is you're talking about the Sovietization of the American exactly culture. Right. Where essentially, like what, my first time I went to Russia, I always got the biggest kick out of this. They told you you couldn't carry Russian, this is during the, when they were still communists, yeah. you couldn't have Russian currency outside the Russian border. And outside the Russian border included... You can't the, live on less than 25 whatever Well, the, the, the joke of it was you can't have the currency yeah. outside. And the, and the border actually began when you ended at the airport. There's actually a line where you were out... Give, that, give us your money. No, you were, in, you were at a point. But the thing is to get inside to the terminal, which was essentially where you were, was essentially outside the country. You couldn't legally have Russian currency. All the carts that you pushed around that cost like a couple of rubles were outside. Right. So you had to have currency outside to use a cart. And it was like, so you had to <laughs> break the law immediately. <laughs> and the Russian system, which I think is what's happening here, is making everybody a criminal so you can just, at any given point, just pick uh, up so anybody. Exactly right. You pick up you, you, you've exactly got right. it, you're I committed. Debated, I debated Hillary Rosen down at USC. 
and I was laying this out. I was saying basically anything you do, you're former head of the RIAA, and she said. That's right. Basically, everybody's always violating the law, but you should trust us to be <laughs> suing the people who ought to be sued. When and they say trust exactly us. When I had exactly the sense of it, what John said, this is the Sovietization of American culture. We have this extraordinarily creative class that lives in the black market, right? They're black market creators. Right? And it's happening. And, and that's and the you point. You haven't shut this down. Those kids, they were incredibly intelligent. They were really uh, uh, entrepreneurs, but they all lived in the black market. And I say, you know, why the hell in a democracy should we have something like the black market living like that? Like if you, you know, if the system is bad, we should be changing it. Right. But that's of course not well, happening. And, 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 the, and the funny thing is, is it would probably make it better. I mean, if, you know, I have this, I have kind of an opinion now that like if I see it on iTunes, people should be buying it. If well, I don't see it on iTunes, people should people be stealing should be it, taking it for this, where they can find it. It's their own problem. If this they're not putting it brings there. us back to the Napster thing, and which people just want to deny. I mean, this is why I think the Sovietization thing is so important to understand because. It's the, all the evidence is against that this this working to the benefit of the capitalists. For example, and I'm not saying in terms like I'm a Marxist or anything, but for example, when Napster was at its watch hate, out because Larry was a conservative too at one time. It's, <laughs> he, he, you're sitting next to him; it could be a problem. I don't, yeah, but, <laughs> so uh, anyway, the, when Napster was at its most popular, CD sales were on the rise, and when Napster was cut off, those sales dropped like a rock, and they do not want to face this fact. Yeah, and, well, and part of it was is because when you were on Napster, you would you would go to somebody else's library exactly. and. Exactly. See a whole bunch of other cool stuff, and you which know, you didn't like, know about, you, and, and you know, and you could find stuff that wasn't, you know, and all that's that that kind of that age of that, that discovery that created more sales. It was one of the greatest mechanisms ever. That part of it, it was the main so, thing, which is that I could see this guy has my taste. I could tell because he's got this, but then he's got this unusual tune on here, and I'm thinking, I never heard of these right. guys. You click on it, boom! It was like, wow, these guys are great. And so, yeah. in the long run, who cares? I mean, eventually, this whole edifice is going to crumble and fall. Yes. No. Really? Why do you think that? <laughs> because you have a massive underground growing all the time of people who are ignoring copyright law. Well, it. something's going to grow, and and I and I, you know I, I train lawyers for a living, right? And so you stand in front of a class and you try to tell them why they're supposed to follow legal ethics, and they think about the last ten years of their life where they've done nothing but break the law every single day of their life. We pay a price say, for that, for yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a corrosive effect corrosive. on society. This is the yeah. one thing that Valenti and I, Jack Valenti, had the former head of the MPAA, and I agree about this. It's awful that you raise a generation of kids breaking the law. But his response is, Throw let's find jail. a more effective way to wage war against. <laughs> the enemy right. and my response is let's find a better Change law so that yeah. normal behavior isn't criminal. Well and I think that when they create these rules and if they if they were I mean I personally sometimes think that, that I hope that they are able to fully enforce the law fully enforce everything that they're that they're talking about because it will create a gap that a lot of other people can move in on because if it's it, beca if it becomes so hard to use that music if it becomes so hard oh, because of all right. the DRM yeah. Yeah. Other people that are using, for instance, stuff like MySpace, you know, and they're, you know, these bands are selling a half a million albums, you know, with no record company, you know, and and when and and as and, and as Apple gets bigger and bigger with iTunes and as and as, you know, for instance, the, the this video iPod, you know, it's going to take a couple years probably to figure out the SAG versus the Directors Guild versus. Oh, there already is. No, that's that's the, the whole issue. Right, they're the already going. Sorry, hey, 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 we want a piece of this. You guys yeah. are going to start throwing this point two cents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and, and the pain. thing is, is that's going to lock them up, and it's going to open the opportunity for a lot of us doing shows like this to go on that small screen and fill that void that they're yeah, creating right. by right. by stopping all of this stuff. You know, and that and, and they and they're and they're leaving money on the table because everyone's just bit torn in it. You know, okay, I can't get it on iTunes, I'm gonna go find it. Well you know, you the know? one thing though that happened, which I think, you know, the directors guild and all these people in the SAG are worried about, you know, getting ripped off on this is because because for so many years they got ripped off on the DVD after they did a movie. There was like, you know, the DVDs were, were, were not were considered like toys. I mean, they weren't given their full percentages off of those sales of DVDs. And as Hollywood shifted toward the DVD as its really primary source of income, these guys were screwed out of the, all, all the money. And now, well, of were, course, they're changing those, those I would contracts. Say they, were screwed. they were screwed. They only got paid $20 million for the film, and they didn't get another penny after that. You know, well, we, I mean, well, well, there's plenty about, of people you know, that, that, that don't make the 20 mil. No, there are, but they're still doing Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not. Know. I'm. I'm so feel so so bad for these people. You know, I mean, you know. So they made. But I'm just $200, saying, they, they were just, only in the top. Yeah, I know. But they just saw this Please. money going down the drain. Can we compare this to software? Is there is there an analogy in free software? I know you're a big proponent of free software, and always have been, uh, Larry. Um, is there an analogy here? I mean, is uh, 
is proprietary well, we, we software? We created Creative Commons stealing the idea of the free software movement, right? right. So free GDL. software gave away f copyright licenses to make it make clear that uh, software would remain in a space where people could build on it without fearing it proprietization. Mm -hmm. It's what we've done is different from free software because free software has basically the free software movement has basically one core license, the GPL, which is copy left it, and Creative Commons has six licenses a range. Um, but it's the same intuition. It's a little bit different though because you know when they started free software they started it because the culture was increasingly producing proprietary software and that was something new. But there's always been a proprietary culture. It's not like you know we began having uh, record companies five years ago. There's always been a proprietary culture. But the difference is before the internet I think it was more balanced. Right? There's lots of ways to use culture that wasn't regulated by copyright law. You read a book that's not a fair use of the book. It's a free use of the book. There's no copyright implication there at all. But you do the same thing on a digital network. It necessarily produces a copy. It necessarily triggers copyright law. So there's nothing you can do in the digital world that doesn't trigger copyright law in some sense. So, so the proprietary nature of culture in the digital world is more com controlling than it was in the analog What world. do we do? Should we, uh, uh, I mean, is there an action that uh, we as citizens need to take? Should we write our members of Congress? Well, should first we? you should write John and tell him his article about Creative Commons was wrong. I think he's uh, retracted you actually, that. No, I don't, you know, I never said that, you know, my column was never wrong. My column was questioning, like, right. the I value of it. No, no, that wasn't it either. I was saying, I don't get it. Why Will do somebody we need explain? It? No. Right. Right. I was saying, I don't get it. Will somebody explain it to me, please? And yeah, he explained. I finally got my explanation. Sometimes you've got to go you public. Need to write another one. <laughs> get, it's doing fine. I don't need my help. But the point is, is that sometimes you've got to go public with, with bafflement, which I do. And it's which is a, appropriate. Yeah, That's I'm saying, hey, I don't get it. You know, somebody. If, and, if you don't, many others and don't. Meanwhile, and I noticed that a lot of people that, that responded to that column, it's on PCMag.com, by the way. Uh, that column, uh, <laughs> that column, they they didn't get it either, but they were just giving me crap because you know I, I said something bad the about holy Larry, yeah. who's like some hero yeah. amongst a bunch of nerds and geeks. Well, I, that was my reaction, frankly. I, I, I couldn't believe you. And I, I think that the, you know, um, I'm I what I, one of the things that I think is the most important because we do a lot of work in Africa, you know, doing design. We have a lot of members in Africa, and we and we're designing. So the developing nations license, I think, is important. We sell. I know we sell our software that we create at 10% of what we sell it in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, because that is something that I, that you know. Talk I a little bit about really that, Larry, because I think that Corey Doctor is also using that for his latest book, the, yes, uh, the Third right. World License. I, or what? I'm sorry, developing, developing nations license. license. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, the basic idea here was that if you could put something on a developing nations license, that means in a developing nation you can do whatever you want with this. Outside of the developing nations, ordinary rules apply. And we started this because we were asked by Jamie Love, who's a big uh, activist in this area, to build this license, so we did. Um, but the thing that was coolest that surprised me about it was there's a bunch of architects who are designing low-cost housing, right? And they've stamped all of their uh, designs with Creative Commons Developing Nations licenses, meaning people in developing nations can take these designs, do whatever the hell they want with them. But outside of the developing world, you got to deal with them in the ordinary copyright way. So it's just trying to facilitate spread into markets where you know, it wouldn't spread otherwise, and you don't want to call somebody a pirate because they're building on your ideas in those markets. Um, and so, so you're that's, doing that's that with your thing. software? Corey's do that doing that with his book? It, like, well, with the Pixelcore, we have a membership that people pay for. And then if you're from Africa specifically, you don't pay, there's no membership fee. You know, so, you know, that's a, you know, that, that's, that's how, you know, the same thing. it's exactly the same license um, yeah. uh, of that process because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it, our, our membership per year costs $420 a year. That represents you know, four months of work for the average person that's that's in Zimbabwe, which is so where we have a lot of members. It just doesn't make any sense. What? If they have a job. If right? they have a no. job. I mean, yeah. you know, the, it, it doesn't make any sense in a whole lot of ways. If I want to expand, if I want to create opportunity there, you know, it, you know, for bis good business opportunity. I mean, we do it primarily because I think it's good business. I'm not, you know, I'm, I think it makes a difference, but I also think it's good business. What I want is as many people able to do that yeah, no, as that's possible. That's a great point. So, you know, we, so I, in the context of the arts, never go around telling artists what they ought to do to give away their work, right? I'm not trying to guilt anybody into giving away their rights. What we think is this might be a more effective way to, to make your work succeed, right? That's the message there. Context of science, we have a pro related project, the Science Commons. Um, it's very different. I mean, I think scientists have an ethic. It's an obligation, not just to produce knowledge, but to produce knowledge that's universally accessible. Because, you know, if you're in Africa, you can't pay a penny for the cost of access to, um, you know, a, a journal that might cost $10,000 a year to, uh, to be distributed in Africa. So I think scientists have a moral obligation in some sense to make their work available in the way that artists don't. So 
Creative Commons is just about, here's a bunch of tools, you figure out what works best for you. If you want to go the Hollywood route, more power to you, but if you want to have a more flexible system that might give you wider access, then we're just going to make it easy well, for you. Well, you're not losing anything either. I mean, when you're a software developer giving away software in Africa... You wouldn't be Africa, selling it you, there anyway. They, they steal it anyway. I mean, I, I was in Zimbabwe for a month, and a bunch of movies came out. I had them two days after they were released to the theaters here. In China, you in, get them but two weeks earlier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so it was, you know, and, and so the thing is, is that it, it is, it is, um, you're not losing anything. You're just, you're just, you're getting to know who they are. You, you are, you know, expanding into that market. You are, and when it builds up, you can change how that looks. You know, when people yeah. have the money to do it. Well, I mean, the it may thing. Never happen. But if you, it will definitely never happen if it's a culture of of people doing it illegally and and they have no intention of. Ever I don't know. Going I back, wonder about know? that because China is, you know, has both. You know, you have mixed messages because if you take a look at the, the the amount of money people make on a monthly basis in China and the fact that they're very heavily into piracy and that you can get these DVDs, very high quality ones and and, che and crappy ones, but mostly you can get the good ones. They're called DVD nines if you're over there looking around. Um, <laughs> not that I've ever seen them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an uh, and they tend to be there's something fo there's something kind of fishy about it because the, the, when you see these things you can tell that they're from the master tapes. I mean this is the data. This oh, yeah. is the real deal. It's not like you know except they leave out some of the special features and stuff. They got others because the thing hasn't been quite finished. But uh, so there's a leak well, in the lab somewhere. It's so deep or there that it could that be Hollywood looking for some extra income back door. As far as I'm concerned, it's pretty suspicious. How do they get it? I mean, you walk you walk into you walk into the in, in the airport in Harare, and they have DVDs where they have three movies on the same DVD on the same you know DVD. They've they've squished all three movies. Yeah, you can do four X. You know, and, and so they uh, you know, and, and that's not, that's just at a regular store. It's a big shiny store. It's not I like hate, you know, if you go to Malaysia, then the big malls they got they got big stores that sell DVDs in good right. quality. And you can look at them. They let you sh watch them. And it's a regular mall store, and then you can go down the hall, and they have a, a software right. store, and well, they have everything now, now available I'm for to a feel dollar a disc. Sorry for Hollywood. What, I mean, don't well, they have but some the thing is, is it's right to protect themselves? You know, you, you, well, like he said earlier, because you, you, the twenty million bucks isn't enough for these guys. I mean, all right, I mean, but, 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 the line. But, whoa, 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 just, but uh, you know, there's there's just, you're talking about way different things. I mean, like there's there's some funny. No, I agree. That, you know, why pirating movies on BitTorrent is keeping Bob from having a job. No, I'm not. I'm not in arguing. I'm not arguing at all about crazy. this, and the fact of the matter is the real problem for Hollywood are these massive production factories. Which not mean, you and me. Not some guy do yeah. downloading something yeah. from BitTorrent after eight hours. Right. Right. I mean, that, what kind of loss of money is that compared right. to some guys cranking these things? These are pressed. Yeah. These are not like burned discs. They're pressed. They're pressed on a shoe. Well, and, and they go after those guys. I mean, they're no, busts they all don't. the time. Well, they seem to be. Maybe they're just oh, I think it's a bunch busts. of BS, personally. They, they plow over a bunch of discs they can't well, sell, and they make a big deal about it. Less successful, if you can imagine. Was it you, Alex, who were telling me there, there's, there are places uh, somewhere in Africa? There's a very vital film community, but they have to crank out a oh, lot of movies. Well, in Nigeria, I was talking to a, a friend of mine's a Nigerian filmmaker, and, and I got so a letter from him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, yeah, he, 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 he has some money in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but in Nigeria, they make in Nigeria makes more films than anywhere else in the world. So it's more it than India. More, more than yes. India. Wow. Um, India makes more than Hollywood, but Nigeria makes more. But they're all about fifteen thousand dollars films, and a lot of them are these kind of soap opery, yeah. you know, type of things. And and but I was talking about I was talking to him about the business model, and he said the deal is is we we do we shoot the film. We get it to the theaters and we get the DVD out as fast as we can. We've got about a week to make all of our money back. And then after that, the piracy takes over and I'll never see another penny. But their entire, what they did is instead of telling, trying to enforce it, which in Nigeria would be impossible, they built a business model around what worked. Right. You know, and, and these guys are, some of them are doing pretty well. They just, it's just a whole different and business this, model. This was directly driven by piracy uh, because originally it was Hollywood videos, which they were mm -hmm. pirating. And that built an infrastructure of VCRs in people's houses, right? Because people wanted to have the, so then you had this infrastructure of VCRs and then they could start doing their own Nigerian movies and take advantage of this infrastructure of VCRs and have this model that was, you know, very profitable but very different from the model of Hollywood. Yeah. And they make that's an, actually an interesting uh, progression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hollywood say would say that's where we're headed, right? If yeah, we don't well, do actually, something about watch, this, this is what's going to happen. You're not going to get you know Sylvester Stallone movies if anymore. If you watch the, the, some of the trade stuff going on, they're, they're already talking about moving that DVD release date closer and closer and closer. And I don't understand personally because I think that people who really like a movie will will go to the movie and buy the DVD or buy the DVD and go to the movie both. But I think that if you went to a first run movie. And they were selling the DVD of at that the film theater, at right. the theater, only at the theater, by the way, yeah. for the first run. Yeah. 
I think they would get huge sales off of that, and people would have a good time. And the other home. thing, the other thing's really cool is if you go. Well, to, yeah, no, obviously, but with the, with the, uh, what's his name? The, what's that movie that came out with the you know, with the uh, spaceship guys? Serenity. Serenity. Rock that stars be have been so. doing that for years. They sell a CD this as exactly you walk right. out the door. But if you if you go to Singapore, which of course has been suffering because of this piracy for a long time, and you go to a movie theater, it's an extraordinary experience. It's a first class experience because they realize the only way to get you to come to the movie theater is if they make it really great. So you can get great food served to you, drink served you as you're watching the movie um, and it's all a sort of competitive way to to try to beat the piracy I think we're moving that way well in we're, Europe they've we're, had you know they got great taquitos now in my theater <laughs> <laughs> what theater is this <laughs> what, are you living in Mexico City <laughs> no I really do they put them on the same rollers at the hot dogs oh geez really? you're making me sick <laughs> well they, they um, uh, I think that we're really looking at a uh, where content starts to split into you know screens like this so you have these little, you have little screens. Disposable and have, content and, and premium content. Premium content that's big screens. And it's not just big screens at the theater. It's big screens on, you know, your projection. You know, when I look at what I want to have at home, I want to have a big projection. And when I want to watch big things like big films or whatever, I want to watch it. But watching shows like this, watching, you know, the news, a lot of the other things, I can, I can happily watch on a little screen. Well, you know, Patrick, you're producing uh, a, now twice a week a TV show for Ziff Davis. What is their hope for this? Is there is this a it's loss gonna, leader? Is this going to be a business? No, I mean, my my fundamental assumption going into this in terms of the business model was that there was no point in trying to sell the content because um, you can't hold on to you it. You can't hold on to it, especially with the. Our, I mean, we've got a target audience is like sixty percent of our audience is, is accessing it either directly through like VLC. Um, right. Well, we're in know, a worse position than anybody because we have the most right. sophisticated audience. You know what I mean? So there's like, a, you know, there's like our, our whole audience is, is pretty advanced technically. So the, the idea of selling the episodes on the front side, there's just, there's no margin in it, right? Especially when you sit down and live with some, the funniest thing at web, the web 2.0 conference, the, the most useful thing at the web 2.0 conference. You're still looking for something? No. <laughs> <laughs> I had some. You just shot me down so hard it all went away. But they basically, one of the, the venture capital guys, Guys came up and he's like, "Look, I have a table. I have a stable of teenagers I use for polling of information." He like he plays twenty questions with them, and the question keeps coming back is, "No, yeah, I get my music from you know, um, you know, online. I get my movies from Napster. Yeah, I get all. You know, we don't we don't watch television through cable. We don't watch television shows through." And it keeps coming back to that. So for us, it's all advertising based and distribution. Dark. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, which is huge and growing. It's huge, and there's no reason to think it'll it'll stop well, growing. And I think that there's also there there are people who like, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, there's exposure that you can right. get as well. I mean, like the, the Pixelcore is working on shows that we're going to put out, you know, that are around visual effects and creating mm -hmm. media and so on and so forth. We don't. We, we may have some sponsors, but we don't need a ton of sponsors because mm -hmm. the show itself is increasing what people know about us. You know, and, and that and that improves. It. And, and that we've talked about this in in previous twits where if BMW did great shows about how they design cars, there'd be lots of people well, going to well, it. What does you know? Twit do? We're not, we're not selling anything. I mean, I, I but we do have a plan. We have a plan. <laughs> Warwick hasn't re revealed it to anybody, but yeah, there but, is. But Twit relies upon the largesse and, and generosity the good, the, of its viewers. That's actually really it. Right? Right? It's the goodwill right. of the viewers. If they don't want to pay for it, they don't pay for it, and I guess we'll go away. If they do pay for it, then we continue to do it. Which and is that's an it. I mean, that's you, a model, I guess. And you can decide yeah, to it, a even point. if you're going to sell it on iTunes. But only, I'll tell you, only one percent of the people who listen to Twit pay for it. Yeah, yeah. that's about right. Well, I mean, you could, but the other thing is, we're not begging enough for money. If we, you know, the PBS model is the one you want, where I don't they come. Do no, of course that. you don't. And who wants to? No, but I'm just saying, you could crank that up to maybe five percent. The show stops after thirty minutes, and you've got to donate to get to the other, you know, thirty minutes. I mean, you could. I'm just saying, you could start begging for money. And I think you could push it up to maybe five percent of the viewer or the of the audience, maybe the way you know, or 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 if you want to be like Gene Scott, the late Gene Scott, you could just basically put the a show on that the whole show for begging money. for money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the, well, the I'd like to money, ask but, for yeah. money right now because we uh, <laughs> we we just spent a lot of money on, on cameras. cameras and equipment. We're on a third mixing board. Because people don't want to pay for my stupidity, so I don't know if that's well, the best. We sell pitch. the old mixing boards. We'll on sell eBay. it. We'll get them. We'll get I them want to borrow one. John's going to take the old mixing the board. Mackie. But but there there are expenses <laughs> to making this a better production, uh, and it's kind of an investment, I guess, in just. Uh, well, there. Are, I mean, hey, there these are cameras are in the handy. RSS feed. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think nano porn is the future. <laughs> <laughs> nano porn. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. you laugh, right? But like, you know, the, there's there's nothing better than you have the, to compete with the experts. That's the problem with the porn thing. Yeah, and I'm no expert. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. <laughs> well, I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> this is drama. But I mean, but seriously, I mean, the whole point is like.
I'm sorry. Can you cut that part out? <laughs> no, leave that. Sorry, name. Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a visual we'd like not to go <laughs> any farther. This is I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, but no, if you think about the part of the issue with Hollywood, right, is, is Hollywood isn't about producing movies. Hollywood is a very complicated it's scheme to make money machine. for. No, it's not even a marketing machine. It's an investment. It's a really peculiar style of investment and in, in a long term investment in making money. You know yeah, I mean? It is. I mean, it's, in it's the bankers. same way that Detroit, we think of them as artists, but it's bankers. And it has been since Louis B. Mayer. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, there's nothing new about it. And, and, and I think that that's the. Yeah. You know, and it's like the the whole point of their production model is. I mean, it's it's even it's more organized than the record industry. I mean, the record industry is like, let's put out a whole bunch of shit and see what. Oop, I can't curse. Uh, right. I haven't done Cut that. Right 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 yeah, quick cussing. Sorry about that. Uh, but it's like the you look at the record industry and it's you look at the the amount of garbage that's cranked out versus what actually sells. You know what I mean? It's like the music. It just costs too much to make movies to be that haphazard right. in your production model. Larry, have any mainstream artists or labels or movie companies looked at Creative Commons as a way of distributing them? So um, the answer is yes, and they're basically next generation people who are looking at it. Um, so in if the, you're already Metallica, you don't. That's you, right. you don't need to do that. Although you know, people, when Wired released the Wired CD that had people like David Byrne and the Beastie Boys and Chuck D and Gilberto Gil. Um, releasing tracks under the license that allowed people to remix it, that was the first time we kind of cracked into that, into that space. Um, the, the one thing I want to say about Metallica, by the way, is that you know, I worked in the, in the radio industry um, when they switched, when Billboard had to, when Billboard <laughs> had to switch. Blue. You had some Metallica things. No, 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 no. I, I, I think that, yet. no, I, I, <laughs> this but, is an interesting but, story. Uh, I don't know. Have I, you told us on the show before? I don't think I've shown okay. this. When I was, uh, I, so I used to work for Sony Music, so that was, so I, I you know, I was, I, I, Hence uh, the promoted. pixel core. You're sort of paying penance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> the, uh, no, I, I worked, for, and I wasn't. Uh, this is when C, when I came out, CDs were just coming out. When I was working there, and and, and I was saying these should be cheap because I knew they cost forty four cents out of the factory, and we should be charging four dollars. But they were like, well, they're perceived as higher than albums, so we'll charge more than albums because we can get it. You know, and. Uh, and, um, and they still do. And they still do. It's ridiculous. Insane, that, you know, remember it's those early years? They were expecting the price to drop, to drop, to drop. Yeah, they never they did. Never and then they went well, up. They, and it, it, it was all up. internally. It was all discussed as something that was that was you know why bother? People are buying them. You know, and, and so the. And so the thing is, is that, uh, but the interesting thing was, is for a long time, you know, when I was a music rep, you'd call guys, you know, we, it was all this, pay, not payola, we didn't do payola, but we would take guys yeah, out for dinner all the time. Back scratching. Yeah, I'd take yeah, guys yeah. out for dinner all the time. I'd make sure they got to see, go behind the scenes and go I was a music director hang at this out. time, I know. I, you I, know. Yeah, we took guys like it, you know, yeah, and, and yeah. we took them to, you know, into Alice in Chains tour bus or, or yeah. you know, whatever it was. And, and I'd and, love you, and I'd say, sure, whatever you want now. Yeah, and, and then yeah. I'd call, what I do is, is we have lists that we have to manage, you know, and so, and, and I'm trying to get up the list, and I get my bonuses are all connected to that. I'll and put I'd you call. in hot rotation. Sure. Yeah, and so can you bump that from light to medium? That's all I need you to do. Or, 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 but the main thing is, is that people would have the raw how many they sold, you know, at, you know, at the record store. But I would get them to bump, you know. I know that it only it was number twentieth, but can you bump it to fifteen? You know, can you do that? And they'd be like, oh, sure, you know, no problem. And it was all this stuff that, you know, and it was just favors. It wasn't like we were paying them or I was, you know, giving them coke or something like that. It was just that I'd ask you to, I'd ask you to just bump it up a little bit, and they would. Who'd, you, so, who'd you reserve the coke for? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, I kept finding this white you know, powder so. in albums. I didn't know it was coke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I would, thought, I would yeah. put you it on my feet. Put it, I didn't, yeah. 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 That's for the deal memos. <laughs> when you walk in a bunch of 20-year-olds that are terribly yeah. confused yeah. owning yeah. their asses. But the, the important thing was is that Billboard decided Side of, they were enough of the shenanigans. They said it has to be electronically, you know. So it, they switched in, I think, 19, I want to say 1991 or whatever. They switched to electronic reporting. One week it just went from you handwrite it to it's keeping track of who you're scanning in and who you're selling, and it had to be that way or you wouldn't be able to do the sales. And suddenly, in one week, Metallica goes top 10. Garth Brooks runs to number one. Garth These guys were suddenly, selling, but they were never given credit for it. They were never given credit for it. And, and suddenly, it, that's what brought on you know, a lot of stuff because suddenly they all jumped to the front. And the thing is, is it, when you look at this, Illegal, you know, thing. There's a lot of bands that are moving around all through the BitTorrent ether, and no one, and they don't get the proper recognition because no one can say that they're right. they're listening to them, you know. And and so, and when if you were able to report it, you know, it would be a much you know different thing, you know. And I think that that's something that. Anyway, I think that so what's the point of this story? The point is, is that it's a great story. Is that by it's making a great point. story. <laughs> no, but the point, the, the point of the story the is, point is, is that, that we have more that, people watching the Twit broadcast than we're getting credit. Yeah. Right? No, the is point, that point is, is that is that the is that the uh, it, when you make things illegal, you know, people aren't getting. It's not just that they're not getting money for it. They're also they're not getting recognition that people are listening to it, which creates the buzz that 
sells albums. You got to twist this around a little bit so you have a really strong point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll work on it. Just Next say twist. It. Yeah, it's yeah, a twist. Yeah, exactly. story that it just d dies well, in the vine. You know, and that's why when you look, I mean, to, uh, for podcasts, you look at the. There's uh, a point top, in that, so I'm going to use that story in one of my columns. The top 20 lists on podcasts, uh, there's a real debate over what Yahoo's doing, which is. Whatever is the most. Oh, there's a bunch of podcasts. Who gets the most websites this week. That, that have the top ten? There's, there's, it's there's made guys up. are dreaming it up. It's votes. It's, and I think it would be very valuable for us to know. And maybe we wouldn't be number one. I don't. That's not the point. But well, we for would two, be. I'm not who really about is it. most listened to? That's valuable. I mean, well, that's I think that one of the biggest problems right now with the iTunes Music Store is that is that you only know what the top twenty are. And everything disappears. What you well, don't no, know no, is you what is the top ten. Of, what's the top ten of of Tech. What is the top yeah. ten of religion? What I is the agree. top ten? If, Especially and that because if you if you think about um, Chris really Anderson's really long tail, I mean, they could, and they don't, yeah. and they shouldn't. So if you think of Chris Anderson's long tail story, right? So the whole future is about not what the top fifty is; it's exactly. the next three hundred. And so finding some way to give recognition even to the next three hundred is to figure uh, out what's uh, going to be. What's, why does he say that? Well, so so Chris's point is that in the digital world, it's not the top fifty that matters; yeah. it's everything after the top fifty. Because yeah, this you can is this continue one, you know, to I'm not a subscriber to this model, by the way. Yeah, but you weren't a subscriber to blogs. You weren't a subscriber to podcasting. Uh, no, 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 but the idea was a small, <laughs> Thank a you, small Larry. amount of traffic. Thank you, Larry. No, no, no. But a small amount of traffic over an extended period of time adds up. You know, you know I mean? it reminds me of the old thing. The guys who are on network television still get the attention. I don't care what, you know, people are always thinking that all this little stuff is going to mount to a hill of beans. No, but when there was just network ABC, television. Get on ABC, man. Right, you no, know, no, it's not saying you shouldn't be on ABC. If you can be on ABC, that's great. But the point is, in the digital world, the person who's number 1,500 can actually start having a market. And in the analog world, they couldn't have a market because yeah. you couldn't produce and sell at 1,500. And in the real so world, we're number 1,500. We're maybe number 15,000. I mean, we may be successful as a podcast, but that's nothing. Although I have to say, I numbers, will be on ABC in hey, December CNBC doing Regis get, and Kelly, and I don't get anywhere near the attention that I got for doing. I get for doing that every three months. But but do a do a number one podcast, and the Wall Street Journal calls you. So C CNBC has less numbers than we have. Absolutely. Is that right? But they yeah, make more money. Typically, they right? And the people on those shows money. can be, get paid up to a million dollars a year. CNBC makes more money than NBC because it's fifty thousand people, but it's the right fifty. Or at least people. it was during the dot com era when yeah, they were throwing money. It'll be back. It'll be back. I think CNBC's got potential. Hmm. I mean, look at the Larry Kramer's, or not Larry, but the Jim Kramer's uh, Mad, Mad Money. Mad, 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 Mad. <laughs> I like. I want to get that board. He has. He punches the button. And yeah. Goes, uh, yeah. Bing, bing. I, I don't know how many times you can watch that show, but oh, it's, you it's, can't. it's entertainment. You know, once in a while. You cannot. Yeah. Should we pause for a moment? Are we? Uh, no, no, we're, we're still recording. It's, these are just backup tapes. Oh, okay. No, but whoever's the I mean, phone this way, though, we know what it fired. keeps coming back to is like, who's making money, and how it's do you pay? What's the, how do you make it pay for itself? You know well, what I mean? But, but like for instance, we have you know two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand you know people listening to this podcast, or if, a half a million. We don't know. We don't know. It could be half. A million. It's at least two hundred thousand. Yeah. Let's say let's say we Very have that number. Let's say one percent or two percent are willing to buy the show for a dollar ninety nine, and let's say we get a dollar out of it. That starts to get pretty close to. I mean, let me do you know, math. Yeah, yeah. Two percent of let's say let's say we have a half a million, and two percent <laughs> is ten thousand, and, and we get a dollar. It's like ten thousand dollars per show. That's not bad. And the thing considering is, considering the cost of making it, well, right? The, the, the point it's is, is that. Cheap, but it, it, but if, it, if 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 you can get to a point, there's a huge future, I think, and and in the emerging world, there's a incredible future for shows that make three to five thousand dollars a show. You know, and the Absolutely. thing is, is that you know, and, and call and for help is, cost me twenty seven hundred dollars to produce call for help. Right. If we could make five thousand dollars, we we would have a profit. And you have a whole lot of them. And the and the problem that's is that's the is key. That you have to have a lot of because making the you could. three grand here and there. Well, no, but, you know, and this is look. Th there is a there is an <laughs> interest. Like, wait, what's the last time anybody at this table had a real job? Making three grand here and there. I know people people kill for a lot less than three grand. Hey, I have a real job. Well, I know you have <laughs> that's a real what we're job. Saying I, but what I'm saying is like you know I quit last feed. year. Free Come on. It's chicken feed for you. But if you it's leave chicken the chicken feed for you too, chicken Yeah, but for most of the people out there. Three grand is still right, a lot of money. Right. Not most of the people out there. Are, there are, no, you know what? A lot of you the know, people out there are making make a lot more money than we are. Back in the There's uh, tech a lot TV of rich days, guys watching this show. Back in the tech TV days, they always said Patrick was the guy for the lunchbox crowd, and now yeah. well, he still is. <laughs> that, but it's like I also was. You know, I was never on. Contract. We're working stiff out there. He's only. Making, he's not listening to this show. Believe Actually, me. Actually, a lot of them are listening oh, to this yeah, show. I want to have one working stiff send me a. You know no, you, you okay, need this time in the but, you know, what, what constitutes a working stiff in your by your definition? What constitutes? I'm talking about a guy who works like you know, like you know, one of the big steel all mills. Right, all right, enough of this. <laughs> so what I would like to see is a model that would make it possible. I don't think we're going to get rich on this. I don't right. care if we get rich on this, but I a model that make it possible idea. for us to build 
a tech TV, a, 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 network, a network of do ten you, do shows you need that are good. Well, yes. Why? Because then you have an entity that you can sell to some venture capitalists, and, and then you can walk away with a ton of money. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> no, yeah, I tell you, a chicken feed. there is strength in numbers. You don't need an actually. You don't need a network because that's what's great about this model is anybody can it's go it And in fact, and in fact, the, the the actual model itself probably doesn't even benefit from ha having a network. Well, the only reason for the network is because of the, the the last throws of the next bubble. They're going to be buying up these yes. networks, even though these networks are, are probably going to fail in the they long run. They just remind haul. them of the good old days, and they want to. They're they going to get in it. there because it's going to look good on paper. There they is got the an advantage counters, to a network. Check it. I'll tell you the advantage because I've thought about this a little bit. Like, why do we, why would we even want another show? Let's just do one good show. The advantage <laughs> is <laughs> the advantage. And we, and we haven't gotten to that yet. Well, as soon as we get to one good show, I'm doing two. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. The advantage is uh, that you can have some sort of affinity group. You can have some, you, you say, well, I like that show. I might look right. at this show. Uh, it's like it's, being a publisher. It's yeah. being a publisher. Right. And so I think there is Good an advantage brand to brand name. If you were going to sell ads, there's a real advantage to it. Now, I don't yeah. think we're going to sell ads. I no. think what we're going to do is monetize it by selling shows or by asking for donations. There's, yeah, this is the ad thing. I, you know, I really have, my, I think one of the competitive advantages we have is to avoid the advertising model in, in, within the show itself. Unless we want to do product placement. Which we do free with the Apple. But yeah, they're sure getting a lot of publicity. They get too much publicity. All they have to do is keep announcing a new iPod every few weeks. Yeah, and, they're and, getting and all, they're, it's know, all free. Maybe that's for their them. strategy. But, but the, you know, I think a lot of these guys, because there's, there's these podcasts coming out from everywhere. All the networks, CNBC has them. And they're uh, the top. Ball look at the podcasts, top 20. And it's mostly mainstream podcasts. Right, and, but they're all loaded with ads. Are they? I don't know. Are they? I haven't listened to them. I don't, Actually, listen to them. The I don't think anybody listens no, 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 to them. Tiki Bar TV, Peyton's Now, that's because it's video. NPR. Now, it's ch it changed very much when the video yeah. came out. Tiki Bar is actually hysterical. What's Tiki? It? No. Yeah. They unfortunately, unfortunately only do about one a month. It's weird. It's the number one podcast right now because it's video. And it's uh, a, basically a drink recipe with a kind of bad skit around it. But they have a beautiful, they have a beautiful woman on it. It I has, the, that's a lot it of has the explicit of it. We should label. We need a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, I need a beautiful. They're woman. all tuning in for Patrick. Yeah, they like that lunch. And box the numbers thing. went down. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you look at it, it's like, what are the? I mean, if you start going into like the top, okay, so that's still changed though. You got It's changed when the video came out. Before video came out. Because it's now polluted with things like your show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank a, you. No, no, I'm just saying there's a lot of video on there because everybody's downloading video. But before then, it was NPR was dominant, yeah, uh, uh, Hardball, CNBC. Mainstream broadcasters were starting to take over yeah. the list. And I think that's what will happen inevitably. I mean, look at tech podcasts are big now only because it's technophiles that are listening to the podcast. Yeah, so we're, we're in the, right in the middle of the early adopter yeah, curve. it's going to be over for us in a month, and so that's why we're going <laughs> well, I mean, to... Please, 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 please give us money, please. <laughs> It'll be over in a but month. They can't they, compete with us. We have more talented, smart guys that come on this show. Uh, example, right around they the table. They don't want to with us. They, they, they mass mass mean, it's just a bunch of, bunch of boneheads. Have you listened to these guys on these shows? I'm just, you watch these guys, they don't know anything. It's like they're clueless. Well, I thought that for a long time in uh, computer talk radio, because most computer talk radio is pretty bad. Well, that's because most of the time you're answering it questions. Me at all. No, it's because computer talk radio is mostly answering the same questions about know, problems so with boring. Windows. I Why do so I mean, who wants green? to listen yeah, to this? That's boring. I right. was listening to uh, O'Donnell business. the other day locally, and he's same like, had thing. somebody on, yeah. and it was like they're talking about how their hard disk oh. crapped out, and this, and he's going on and on. It was I an try hour. To hang up on those guys. I know. Oh, you're Sorry. better off just ranting. I do rant quite a bit. Yeah, you do. But I increasing think, the rant. I think that the the, the the whole thing is, is it gets back into that whole if you're producing. A lot of the work. I mean, it's not like producing one show, but if you're producing right. 50 shows, well, we have know, a, and, and, a huge and, and advantage because of, of you, because of Pixel Core. Right. Uh, we couldn't do this without Pixel Core because well, it gives us the backbone. For well, it. Pixel Core was designed to do this. <laughs> I mean, that, right. that's why right. it was built. And right. so it's. I mean, look at how many so volunteers there are here. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two eight, of them are asleep, but that's okay because they're volunteers. <laughs> Wake uh, them up. We're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, we're getting what we pay for. No, but I mean, I th you couldn't do that. Uh, well, without, and, without and the idea is that you want, you know, you're going to need a massive number of people who are, you know, at, at the beginning willing to do it because it's it is something that's exciting to it's do, cool. but looking towards a business model. And that the business wears model, off. It, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a hundred thousand dollars a show. It really could be five thousand dollars a show. And the problem is, is that over time that becomes a real issue because it's it's fine when there's ten of us, but if there's ten thousand shows getting, you know, a hundred thousand viewers. There are not a lot of eyeballs left for the mat. You know, it's, it is the is, you uh, know the Tower of Babel. A Alex's theorem of why the entire television industry is about to collapse. It's yeah. about to just go. 
because nobody will be watching because they're all busy watching their. their well, just podcast, because because what, 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 what everything is what everything about broadcast uh, TV is I'm all sure about this, by the way. is all about how do we get the most people to watch our show? But this and, is and this is, all, this is it's true. all lukewarm. How do we how do we put out something that's medium that's it's not really good but it's not really bad? But they know how to do that. But we know how to do that really well. But the thing is, is that like when we walk into when we walk into Blockbuster, we see ninety percent. Fiction. When we walk into Borders, a much more mature, mature media market, it's 90% nonfiction. What people want to wa watch is stuff that they care about. I mean, Discovery Channel is, is very that why popular, reality very shows big. Are, are big now? Well, it's, I think that there's something more visceral about that. You know, I think that there's something that, that, that it's cheap to make is, is, is another big piece of it. You know, it's the whole Jerry Springer, wow, it's, I feel so sweet. I should I'd leap like over to, the table. I'd like to sit, to sit down and do a whole show about this topic. Mm -hmm. And bring in IPTV and some of these other issues, which are going to make a huge right. difference. Maybe the next episode we well, can Well, I'm talk just about saying, because there's... There's a there's something here. I mean, there's a there's a kernel, especially after I give you crap about that n non ending story, <laughs> but there's a kernel of something here that's important, and and it's and it needs to be explored because I agree with you 100 percent on this. And there's something screwy going on. There's something wrong with the old models. The old model guys don't know what to do about their their declining audience either. They're they're completely freaked about. And it. I that's hope they stay there. You know, the thing is, is I'm not I'm not trying to change their minds. Like people yeah, ask me, exactly. what am I? What do you want me to do? When but I'm I, Hollywood, but, but I'm again, like, bring just it, keep nothing. on doing the same exactly. thing. But I'll, bringing it back to cultural issues, I'm concerned. The I'm concerned about the fact that we have it's going to be so balkanized in terms of the, the millions of shows available on IPTV that there'll be no connection where I can see Pat at the morning at the steel mill and say, hey, did you watch uh, such that's and such? That's old-fashioned. Nobody bull. needs to I talk about the, they talk what, about football. what Carson... They talk about, they talk about you know, the Cal game. You know, they won this game finally yesterday. Well, there'll always be events that people will join well, up Well, I mean, but there always has to be something. And people, you, you think that people are talking talk about, about their television own anymore? lives for a change. Oh, things please. That, who things needs that? Exactly. Happened to them for a change instead of what yeah, happened in a little box in their house. Of their lives are mostly watching television. That's well, that's of, maybe but they're not watching thing. the same show. But but the other thing that's possible is is what I would call a six degrees of separation kind of uh, effect, which is that is that we're, we talk about some podcast. You know, like a lot of people that watch this also watch Patrick's show. Right. A lot of people that watch, you know, you know, and so the thing is, is that there is this, you know, as more of we as we trade different hosts from different shows, you end up with a group of people that watch these eight or nine different shows. Well, there is that definitely that going on. I yeah. mean, and that's what's happened with it's the old tech TV folks, and there's just been this kind of little galaxy of stuff you know? right and, and they and they and they help spin each other and so that we we do end up with a common experience among like-minded people there's you know yeah, there's a yeah, small but I think group. John's right it's going to be radically different mm -hmm. and it's it's not gonna be a world where bad? everybody's watch no well, I think I'm not sure it's bad but exactly. it's gonna be radically I think it different. is but there's another difference that I you know I think we've not focused on which is that it's not gonna be just that people are consuming a hundred thousand different things they're gonna be more people actually producing things that That's other people I are consuming like. so it's the it's well, the blog like space right yes. so more people are writing most, most of it's crap I that's agree. the problem well, so but what? that's the opportunity the point is most of it's crap but when you sit down and you have to write your arguments out changes how you think right you 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 have seen no evidence of this <laughs> well I, on, on some of the blogs that you and associate the, and the cream with, rises yeah. and you <laughs> discover new stuff there is a lot of new Good stuff that I, we wouldn't no, have I otherwise. I agree with that. There is some stuff that has show, shown up that's that right. is really cool. Well, that's the that's point. really good. But there's so much. But so what? You but just ignore the, numbers, the bad very stuff. Very few people see that stuff. So what? But that's what happened in the beginning when, when when Photoshop came out. You know, there were a thousand interns that suddenly took over what the ad agencies were doing. I was one of them. You know, and making horrible ads and making horrible newsletters. But and they were horrible. cheap. Oh, we were. I I got a bump to seven fifty an hour when I we know you know to do that stuff. You know, and, and but the thing seven is, seven dollars and fifty cents. And yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But over over time, yeah, there's your working stiff. Yeah, but you know, but over <laughs> yeah, but over time, you know, it it congealed into something that you know has a lot more magazines, has a lot more fanzines, has a lot more stuff that we had before because it, it will take time. That you know, the, and and the, but the, the other thing humans is humans have no perspective. Our lives are so well, short. We, we don't really understand what's going on. There is something happening here, but we don't know what it is. Do we, Mr. Jones? Oh, man. Where are you going off on this one for? <laughs> well, I mean, like, a I'm lot just of saying us, we geez. can't really. I think these are natural processes. Is this processes. the way you end the, con is this the, way the argument? This is like you go into some philosophical <laughs> crap? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I, I think he's making some points here. All right, right. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. We, can't. We, we, we should do a show on this. We I mean, should, you're probably right. We should cut this. Well, I, here's, a, here's a question. Do you know the name? Does everybody at the table know the names of their next door neighbors? Yes. Yeah, I do. You As do? of last night, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I still haven't. What, did they rob you? No, we just ran into them. We, they, they, they had been there no. for two months. And Unfortunately, we just I, I, my wife is a very social person, and so right. I do know. I probably wouldn't otherwise. I know every, uh, the names of all the people in my clan in World of Warcraft, though. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I don't know their name names. I know their well, handles. I mean, you've yeah. already embarrassed yourself about this. Yeah. <laughs> we got to wrap this thing up. Uh, Larry, is there anything else you, you want to uh, bring up uh, uh, that is a hot button topic for you? I mean, I, I encourage people to go to Creative Commons. And yeah, read go there that now series. because right now we're in the process of running a campaign to build our own support, so we could really use it. Do you need demonstrate. donations yeah. or okay? Because the RS makes us show that we have public support, otherwise we lose our really? nonprofit status. Right, so hmm. it's important. Right now, what now is public support? How is that defined? Just a large number of people. Is there a certain number, number or just so a small? One. Each of us give a, a dollar. dollar that's okay. Five bucks. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, just go to our page. You the, see the does, the, uh, hits on the website don't count. No, it? not yet. Huh. IRS doesn't have web. So well, it's all counters. about the money, baby. Huh. I would think the that they'd have caught up to that. Yeah. No, no, no. All right. Well, it's so it's been great having you, uh, Thanks Larry. For now that you know how to get here, I hope you'll come back. I'd love to come back. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. as you can see, it's kind of an interesting uh, group. Uh, Kevin Rose couldn't be here; he was in Los Angeles, but he'll be back. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Robert. And what we're trying to do, though, is and I don't know if this succeeded, is cut the number of participants down so that we don't all talk over each other. That really worked. <laughs> so um, it's kind of lively. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a better group when it's four, or f uh, five, or six yeah. people. So I think we're trying to keep it to this number, but rotate people in and out. Um, Patrick Norton is doing great stuff at Digital Life TV, bigger yeah. and better than ever. And now that you're on the top ten in iTunes, I think a lot of people are going to discover it. Uh, well, your intern hope. never called the book me, though. I'm waiting for my call. It's happening next week. Okay. So what do you want to do? Show. You, you want to do a Mac show. segment for us? What oh, do you want to do? Know. I want to do a Windows segment. Okay. Everybody thinks I'm a Mac guy. I should show that you I'm are a Mac some guy. Windows chops. You are a Mac guy. Who wants Windows chops? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll do a Mac segment. <laughs> Alex Lindsay from Pixel Core. Without your great team of people and uh, and my money, I don't think we'd be able to do this podcast. <laughs> 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 Three of them we bought, huh? Yeah. We yeah. also get the hard drives on there? Uh, no, they're, they're coming next. Next coming. What are we getting for hard drives? What are we getting? We're yeah. getting the Anovia, uh, the Anovia um, hard drive, FireWire drives. Patrick jealous. So quick, we've got three XL twos and then the Anovia FireWire drive. No, I'm just loving two. the fact that you guys have like basically my entire all the physical hardware we've built and half the studio costs I have. You guys have spent on cameras and hard drives. I just think that's awesome. We've spent because it's our money. We've it's spent twit money. Twit money. And we thank the twit it's donors being put to good use. Well, Absolutely. I hope so. I mean, at least it's These not are nice, know, nice gear. We spent it on fish cheeks early on, and I think it's probably well, that was and a the donuts didn't help. I wish I had. I wish I had that money back. I wish I had the fish cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, fish cheeks for everybody. Uh, if you go to the website, uh, thisweekintech.com, there are donation buttons there, and your donations help. And like Larry, we're not asking for much. $2 a month, that's all we ask. Uh, and uh, we or do appreciate it. Or $20 a year, or whatever you see fit. Uh, but it is helping us make this a better podcast. And I hope at some time that we probably will have a, a financial structure that doesn't require donations that maybe we'll be able to charge for the video, give away the audio, something like that. We have a plan. <laughs> John keeps telling us we've got a plan. John C. Dvorak is, uh, is available online at dvorak.org slash blog and of course PC Magazine. And uh, I'm expecting now a follow-up to the creative column. Yeah, and, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. You know, <laughs> yeah, speak. you'll get that right out. <laughs> Larry, Le Larry Lessig uh, is at creativecommons.org and of course his blog, which is a great reading. What's the URL for that? Uh, it's lessig.org slash blog. Okay, so just give me a chance yeah. to throw a little plug in. I want to thank the folks at uh, AOL Radio for providing the bandwidth for this. I just got my bandwidth bill for, not for the podcast, but for the RSS, $2,000 last month. RSS is expensive when you've got hundreds of thousands of people hitting it every few minutes. Hmm. Can you believe that? No. I had no idea. I wasn't paying for it before. Now I will uh, find a way to find a way to get it cheaper. Or, you know, one thing we're going to do is probably, uh, I was making, you know, putting the show notes in the RSS feed, that makes it a bigger file. You know, it's a, it's a 50 or 60K file. I'm going to get it down to just the titles in there. So just a little hint for people who are designing their own RSS. Just make uh, sure you keep the links in there, so I care about Well, that's, the, but I think we'll put that on a web page. I don't think we will put it in there. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because um, it was costing us money. Yeah. I have no idea. Uh, anyway, thanks to the folks at AOL Radio who are saving us a lot of money. We're up to, I think, uh, over 40 terabytes of download now from AOLmusic.com. Thank you, AOL. Thank you very much. And, of course, to Mark Blasco for our, uh, our uh, closing theme. Uh, I'm sorry, opening theme. The closing theme is from Ashley Twit. And our little Twit logo is from Dorothy Yamamoto. I am Leo Laporte. Another Twit is in the can. <laughs>